Hey folks, this is going to be sort of a long one. Uh, if you come here for my typical product reviews, maybe give this one a skip. Uh, the focus of this one is about my product design master program and classes I took in my first year and all that jazz. But also maybe stay. Could be interesting. I don't know. I'll leave that up to you. <laughs> okay, let's go get into it. As many of you know, I had a pretty cool opportunity to return back to higher ed at the end of 2023 and earn my Master of Science in Product Design. As of now, I've completed my first full year of the program and just wrapped up my second week of the new fall semester and hot dang was I busy. I had every intention of filming a vlog style kind of come along with me film series to show folks what I was up to and what courses were like, etc. But I just sit here now and honestly, I can say that I don't think that was possible. I was more busy in the last 12 months than I think I've ever been in my whole life. I thought that a 50, 60 hour work week in my full-time career before coming back to school was taking up a lot of my time, but it pales in comparison to this program. The master's program is a 24 seven grind, nonstop learning fest from the second I wake up to the second I hit the bed, all days of the week and three month sprints called semesters. Uh, this is only made possible because it's like living a dream. Uh, I get to do the thing that I love uh, every day. Um, all day long and the hard part is knowing that your limits uh, and where they are and how to take breaks. <laughs> it's kind of like that scene in the Matrix where Neo gets all jacked in for the first time and downloads martial arts in 10 seconds and then pops up hungry for more. Yeah, had to slip in a Matrix reference. Uh, that's grad school for me. If you're passionate about your program and the training is solid and you're here for the right reasons, time becomes your biggest hurdle. There's never enough time to absorb all the information that you crave, especially if you're like me and just can't get enough. So since the weekly vlog didn't happen, here's my year in review and a little peek at what's ahead. In my first fall semester, I took three courses, human factors in design, computer aided design and visual communications. All three of these courses were true gems. Visual communications was all things design sketching. We used pencil and paper, focusing primarily on two-point perspective. I'd never received formal education and design sketching uh, background information, and it was ridiculously informative to learn strategies on drawing three-dimensional objects with precision on 2D mediums. We started with basic forms and in, kind of evolved into more intricate designs throughout the class. Uh, this is a skill I previously undervalued, and I definitely thought that my back of the envelope drawings were good enough to get the job done, but I've since learned otherwise. I've personally met current engineers and designers who told me that they are actually taking a side class or paying for online courses to improve their design sketching skills for their real world situations because they never developed it earlier on in their careers. The ability to, in the moment, real time, communicate with someone what your idea is that you're in the process of ideating is invaluable. Yes, you can and should make something beautiful in CAD, but you won't always have a computer sitting between you and a design team when you need to mock up something fast. Being able to sketch has allowed me to be more persuasive in think tanks and has helped me show others that I understand the ideas they're trying to communicate by drawing them. My second course was Computer Aided Design or CAD. And wow, uh, I've never had an instructor predict the future so well. The instructor for the class started day one by saying, learning CAD is hard, it's going to suck. There's not any way uh, around it, but through it. So keep up with assignments and ask questions and let's just get through it. Uh, absolutely accurate. <laughs> it was uh, hellish, um, but now I have a truly phenomenal tool that I didn't previously have in my toolbox. And I whip it out like literally all the time. Um, the class was centered around SOLIDWORKS specifically, um, but we also dabbled in KeyShot for rendering our images. Um, for those that aren't familiar, CAD is a technology that utilizes computer software to create um, designs for a whole range of applications, including architecture, engineering, manufacturing, and product development. CAD software allows designers and engineers to create 2D and 3D models of objects. Um, that could be like buildings or mechanical parts. Um, and it provides tools for drafting, modeling, rendering, simulation, uh, documentation um, as well, um, which enables folks to kind of visualize and ideate on designs um, more effectively than traditional manual drafting methods. Um, CAD also plays a pretty big role in modern design and manufacturing processes. Um, it's an industry standard software, uh, and it's also kind of its own universe. Think of something you want done, and it can probably do it. 
but it's tricky figuring out where and how to do it if you don't know how. So this class served only as an introductory class, but um, there's a whole world that I have yet to learn in CAD. I'm stoked to continue with it. My final class for the fall semester was Human Factors and Design, and this course jumped into all the theories and methodologies shaping the assessment of various human factors, such as like physical, cognitive, um, social, psychological, and their application to design products and systems that interact with human users or the human body. This course served as an introductory exploration of human factors, theories, and concepts, emphasizing their practical application through user-centered design methods. Typically, the class is composed of students from a wide variety of disciplines and backgrounds, mine was, and the course material is explored through a bunch of different modalities, um, readings, lectures, discussions, um, case studies, course projects, um, and a lot of group work. Um, this class sparked uh, such an interest in me around human factors and its relationship with design that I decided to pursue a graduate minor in human factors and ergonomics after taking this course. I think my favorite reading out of the course was a monster of a textbook called Designing for People, um, an introduction for human factors engineering. Uh, it's a big and expensive read, but highly recommended if you can get your hands on it used or from your library. This course culminated in three large-scale projects, with my final project being an original product design response to a design challenge of my own specification. In this, I needed to identify the design challenge, background research, user research, and create both a low and high fidelity model. This was accompanied by a presentation and a 10-page paper for a comprehensive design statement. For this final project, my partner and I addressed student bicyclists who need to transport large portfolios on their bicycles, aka my current issues I was facing for my visual communications class. After extensive user testing and exploration, I created a bicycle portfolio transportation system, which could attach to an existing portfolio through a universal mount and could then attach to any existing bicycle rack. Beyond these classes, I also secured a design internship with a company called Human Gear during my first semester of the program. This was an amazing experience. The individuals behind Human Gear are genuine and brilliant and are so passionate about what they do. The level of creativity coming out of this company from its CEO and team is amazing to witness, and I learned so much um, from my time with them from both a product design and business operations perspective. Their attention to detail in their products and branding speaks for itself from the way a piece of cutlery fits in your hand to the sound a lid makes when you open or close it. When I think of human-centered design, I think human gear. Also a weird little claim to fame now is that my hands are actually on REI's website because of my work with human gear. If you're not familiar with human gear, you should check out their ghost axe, which is one of my favorites and it has been for a long time. I'll link it down in the description. Okay, moving into spring semester, I took the following classes. User-Centered Design Studio, Research Ethics, Wearable Technology, both Practicum and Laboratory. Spring semester was equally as intense, but after knocking out the first semester, I felt more settled in my role as a student again. Uh, it's a trip returning to higher ed after a 10-year gap, and it took me a bit to get used to how to actually be a student in classes again. I was used to leading teams and projects in my place of work, and I had to take a beat and settle down so I could truly just be okay with not knowing and learning all of the time. Also, having different courses with different instructors, with different ideas of what done looks like, was a little like working three or four different jobs, all with different managers who have varying expectations. So what helped me a lot was just figuring out that I wanted something specifically from the class and focusing on it, um, instead of trying to just reach for A's, which is what I did in my undergrad. I used this as my compass for the spring semester of coursework. For classes, the user-centered design studio was a wild course, which was sort of like the old country buffet of product design. This course started with a focus on service design, then jumping into UX UI design, and rounding out with a physical industrial design piece. This class really had me doing a lot of heavy lifting at first just to get up to speed on how we present our work. Simple things like importance of visual presentation in a digital space, aka how to make a presentation actually look good, and all the rules that exist around how to make that happen, and all the levels of fidelity and how to play with that. This took a lot out of me. It was the first time in my young life that I actually felt dated. Um, a lot of uh, things had changed in 10 years in the world of operations compared to the world of design also has many differences. 
I had to humble myself and really grind daily to catch up to some of my classmates on the fundamentals of how we present and display our work in industry standard ways. For our first project on service design, I was tasked with addressing a problem statement aimed at increasing the number of black and brown prenatal navigators or doulas trained to support people who had experienced incarceration. I had spent a ton of time educating myself on the project just to meet the client's needs with an ideal outcome. It you know, started as a learning phase and ended up evolving into a full-fledged service model. Funny enough, I realized that my background in operations was closely tied to service design. Thinking about the big picture and addressing problem areas felt like second nature to me, and it was you know, definitely challenging, but really, really rewarding. Next, we pivoted into UX UI design, where I took what I learned from service design and applied it to a web application. I picked up Figma and wireframing along the way and also leaned on my user research skills to tackle our design prompt, which was about creating an app focused on reusing construction materials. This project was so much fun. Getting into digital design felt natural. Systems mapping and wireframing had a similar flow to service design, but using Figma was a new beast. Uh, I picked up a ton of new skills and I'm definitely planning to keep growing my UX knowledge for some side projects. We closed it all out with a physical design project where the challenge was to design a bicycle helmet that would better accommodate black and brown individuals' hairstyles. I went all in on this one uh, and used an Artec Leo 3D scanner to image map a two-scale head plus hair and ended up creating a perfectly scaled helmet insert to accommodate braids, twists, or fuller hairstyles. It was really fun to incorporate some of these other technology aspects into the project and create a physical artifact at the end of this project. The second spring course was research ethics. Nothing much to comment on here other than the fact that I love that this course exists um, and that it's required for everyone. Uh, it provides a different, uh, decent framework on how to conduct research and how to just genuinely be a good human. Uh, also, I think it's cool when hard to define things are put in a clear framework. The final two classes for my spring semester were actually partner courses, principles of wearable technology, both lab and practicum. These were my stretch courses for sure. We kicked off a, uh, the class with a crash course in conceptual physics covering circuits, uh, mechanics, energy, thermodynamics, and heat transfer. I mean, this stuff is so cool, but also wow, it took some serious rereading and rereading again to make it stick, especially for a non-science uh, non kid like me. Uh, the whole class revolved around technology and how it works on the body and how we design for that. Once we survived the physics intro, we got into the real fun stuff, which is sensing and mechanical actuation, wearability, fit, comfort, uh, stimulation, and then the big question of um, what happens when a product actually hits the market. Uh, think the uh, epic flop of Google Glass versus the massive success of the Sony Walkman. The lab, though, was a bit of a wild card. It was packed with engineer and computer science students, and then there was me the lonely product design student. <laughs> uh, there were a few human factors folks and a couple of apparel design students as well. Um, the partner work was definitely a challenge uh, up until the final project. That's when one of the other kind of human factor students and I decided to team up without any engineers after running into some rough patches with previous assigned engineer partners. Um, together, we designed a moisture detecting sensing circuit that could be wearable and mounted on the body to detect cannula dislodgement on the Omnipod 5, which is an insulin pump. So safe to say we were super proud of ourselves when we walked away with the highest grade in the course, <laughs> even without engineer students on our side. But by the end of the semester, I was feeling pretty good, full to the brim with new knowledge, and as a nice little bonus, I finished with a 4.0. Uh, definitely a sweet reward for all the work I put in. Some quick throw-ins for two things that got sprinkled in throughout the semester. Uh, one, I got to participate in a Medtronic-sponsored design sprint, which was a blast, and my team took second place. Uh, it was super challenging. We had 24 hours to go through this whole design process from uh, start to finish. We had to create something within that 24-hour turnaround time, and it was uh, really cool. I learned a lot. Um, and the second thing was an article that I wrote um, in a publication to the College of Design, which was all about outdoor gear designed for watering the bushes, aka pee funnels for backpacking and hiking, which is super cool. Um, and that finished out my first year of the program. I spent the summer working at the laboratory I work with through the U and designing prototypes for a small business concept that I launched very recently, um, which focuses on 
uh, modern storage solutions for diabetic equipment. Looking ahead, I'm two weeks into the final year of my program, and so far I'm really digging the coursework. Along with the academic hustle, I've got this mini business that's in its very early stages, which is definitely keeping me on my toes, and I'm already planting seeds for you know, what's next after graduation. I've got my sights set on three key areas as I start planning out my future career path, and that'd be outdoor gear, equipment and services, human-centered uh, healthcare products, and gender-inclusive designs that really explore the body-product relationship. But ultimately, I, I miss leading teams and you know being a shepherd in creative spaces. So at the core of all this uh, is human-centered design. I want to create products that genuinely put people first and where every part of the process is about solving real needs for real people. And that's ultimately where my heart is. Well, folks, if you made it through the whole video, thanks for listening. I hope the deep dive into coursework was interesting to hear for those who have followed me for a while and for those that maybe are new here and are considering a pivot in their careers as well. As always, I'm Milo Tash. Thanks for watching.